Baptist and Seventh-day Adventist. Here's 12 differences between them. Number one, the Sabbath. One thing that is so important to Seventh-day Adventists that it made the name is the fact that they worship and rest on the Seventh-day Sabbath, that is, from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Interestingly, there are also Baptists who do this, called Seventh-day Baptists, but they are a small, small minority. Most Baptists will hold at least a Sunday morning service and often an evening service and midweek service as well. Some, but not all, Baptists also apply other Sabbath principles to Sunday, like not working a job on Sundays. Number two, baptism. In a couple key ways, Seventh-day Adventists and Baptists share similar beliefs on baptism. First, both will only baptize believers and not infants. Second, both only baptize by immersion. Where they differ is in the role baptism plays in salvation. The SDA view is that baptism is part of the plan of salvation. For example, SDA pastor, evangelist, and radio speaker Joe Cruz in his book, Baptism, Is It Really Necessary?, says, One can confidently conclude that if a person has the opportunity to be baptized and refuses to be, that man cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Number three, eternal security. While we're on the topic of salvation, let's discuss eternal security. Can a person once saved forfeit that salvation? Today, the majority of Baptists say no, like Reformed Baptists, most Southern Baptists, and most Independent Baptists. There are, however, free will and general Baptists who say that salvation can be forfeited, and the SDA position is that salvation can be forfeited. Number four, prophecy. Another important distinction is that of prophecy. Many Baptists are cessationists, meaning that they don't believe in a continuing gift of prophecy in the church. Others, though, are continuationists, meaning that such a gift could be present in the church, but often even these would say that the prophetic gift is one of preaching more than that of providing new authoritative interpretations of scripture. For Seventh-day Adventists, prophecy is called an identifying mark of the remnant church, and the writings of a woman named Ellen G. White, who is viewed as one of the most important figures the church had, are divinely inspired. Things that White affirmed and the SDA church still teaches today are often rejected by most Baptists. Number five, soul sleep. The Seventh-day Adventist's seventh fundamental belief says, Though created free beings, each is an indivisible unity of body, mind, and spirit. One thing this means is that when your body is dead, your soul, which is indivisibly connected to it, is unconscious. Some have called this belief soul sleep. Baptists don't believe this. They teach that people who are dead physically are immediately conscious in heaven or hell. Number six, the end times. Another area of difference between Seventh-day Adventists and Baptists is the topic of the end times. The Seventh-day Adventist position is historicist premillennial. There are Baptists who hold this view, but many Baptists hold to a dispensational premillennial view. The main difference between these two is that the dispensational view teaches a rapture of Christians out of the world while the world continues on to a seven-year tribulation period. Other Baptists are not premillennial at all. All millennialism is especially more accepted among Reformed Baptists. Seventh-day Adventists also teach that Christ will reign in heaven during the millennium, and the earth will be desolate, while premillennial Baptists believe that Christ will reign on earth during this time. In addition, Seventh-day Adventism has some dates that Ellen White identified that Baptists don't believe in. For example, Ellen White wrote in the book The Great Controversy that the description of the stars falling in Revelation took place in 1833. Also, the Bible prophecy, in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. White identified 1798 as the end of the tribulation and May 19, 1780 as the dark day when the sun did not give light. Baptists would not affirm these dates. Number seven, food. Another Seventh-day Adventist teaching is that of not eating the unclean meats identified in the Bible. Baptists teach that the unclean food restrictions are done away with in the New Testament. Number eight, government. The form of church government is another difference between Baptists and Seventh-day Adventists. Baptists hold to congregational church polity, meaning that there's no authority that can dictate to a local congregation. Some Baptists will still unite in conventions, which they can influence, but the convention cannot impose anything on the local church. Other Baptist churches are entirely independent, with not even a convention or association. For Seventh-day Adventists, there is a general conference and union and state conferences. The general conference holds rights to the local congregation's finances and property, and pastors are assigned to churches. In Baptist churches, each congregation can choose their own pastor. Number nine, eternal punishment. The vast majority of Baptists affirm what is called eternal conscious torment, or eternal punishment. This belief is that after death and the final judgment, those who are unbelievers or unsaved will end up in the lake of fire, where they will remain conscious forever. Seventh-day Adventists hold a belief called conditional immortality, which teaches that only the saved will be conscious forever, and the unsaved will be cast into the lake of fire, not to be tormented eternally, but to be burned up and totally annihilated and put out of existence. 
Number 10, investigative judgment. Speaking of final judgment, Seventh day Adventists believe that on October 22, 1844, began an investigative judgment that Jesus is in the heavenly sanctuary, and during this judgment, it is being determined who will be raised in the first resurrection. Baptists don't believe in any judgment taking place until after the rapture in the case of dispensational Baptists or the second coming for others. Number 11, Mark of the Beast. Baptists have varying views on the coming mark of the beast. Is it a physical mark that will be enforced by a literal person who is the Antichrist? Most Baptists would say yes, with the amillennialists often saying no. The SDA position is, however, different than either of these. Seventh-day Adventists teach that at some point, the United States, who is viewed as the two-horned beast of Revelation 13, will enforce Sunday worship. And when this takes place at the end of time, Sunday worship is the mark of the beast. Number 12, the health message. A unique aspect of SDA teaching is their health message. Ellen White wrote quite a bit about the church focusing on people's physical health, and this emphasis remains today. Many Seventh-day Adventists become vegetarians or pescatarians and try to follow healthy living habits. Churches have ministry leaders focused on promoting these healthy living practices in the church. Of course, Baptists aren't in favor of unhealthiness, but it must be said that there's no such emphasis on physical health in the majority of Baptist churches. Another difference is the SDA teaching on who Michael the Archangel is, the question of the remnant church, and last generation theology. If you want to learn about these and many other beliefs of the SDA church, click here to watch the video, What is the Seventh-day Adventist Church?